Blue Lock, Chapter 247, Originality. Ryo is looking on Twitter as they've commented mean things about Nagi and him. Nagi and Mikaj are dragging their feet too much. No wonder their salaries are down. Super goal by the one-hit wonder Nagi Seishiro. Nagi and Ryo's salaries went down so much. Could this be bad? Do something, Chris Prince. Stop sitting on the bench and make a new team. Nagi is the one-hit wonder. This is win or bust Nagi. That super goal must have been a fluke. What the hell are these guys doing? Ryo is reading those tweets with a sad look on his face. And rightfully so, they need to get their stuff back together. He asks Nagi if they could talk for a second as they're in the England locker room. Nagi wants to talk to Rio as Rio tells him that now he's down to 16th place with 34 million, it's starting to feel really dicey. With the cutoff point at 23rd with 18 million yen. If Rio keeps performing like this in the next match, he might not make the cut indeed. He needs to at least try to play on par with their game against Bastard Munchen if he wants a bit anywhere near where he started. He doesn't necessarily have to make a super goal, but he should at least be capable of proving his worth through scoring goals. But Nagi is still in the safe zone with a bit of 40 million yen. If they mess up the next game as well and go down again, they could end up at 24th or lower, which is the real danger zone. They need to put up results in the final round. They have to keep going. Nagi interrupts him as he agrees with Ryo, because apparently he was thinking the same thing. Ryo is kind of confused right now. Nagi's drive might be back right now, as he's at least thinking straight, which is a big step forward for Nagi. Otherwise, it wouldn't really be worthwhile for him to go around asking Itoshi Rin and Baru Shue what their reason for playing football is. Nagi told Ryo that they need to change, as he's been feeling a bit off ever since they won the first round. We see some more tweets now. Doesn't Nagi look like someone who only stars? when surrounded by amateurs? The geniuses disappeared, and they really did. Their talents didn't wither, as Chris Prince likes to say it, but their hunger for football was the thing that withered. It could only be regained through their originality. FC Barcha is doing pretty well considering they only lost three, two against the dominant PXG, so it isn't like Nagi and Rio are going to have an easy time against them. But Chira should be continuing to evolve as well, as I don't see anything going out of hand with that ego of his. Nagi can't seem to get that drive to come back like Baru noticed when he was playing against him. He wasn't even annoying anymore like he used to be, very pathetic indeed. Attaining success above his talent level really has hurt him a lot. Nagi has been feeling lost. We see some more tweets now, and these are encouraging. I believe in you. Nagi Seishiro will survive. Nagi is back. What a wonderful goal once again. Good luck, Nagi Seishiro. But the moment didn't wait for Nagi and his enemies were getting further and further ahead. Baru Shue, Itoshi Rin, and Isagi Yoichi seem to be too far ahead for the egoist who lost his ways. They all know their originality and have a very strong reason and foundation for their egos. Nagi is realizing that if they don't keep changing, they will never reach the world's number one spot. So he tells Ryo to change as he wants to get some new heat. Ryo agrees as he tells Nagi that he has an idea. I'm excited to see what Ryo will come up with for their final match against FC Barcha. We go to the Germany team monitor room as Noah tells the egoists that they'll go with a style that has a number of options. Based on this basic form of offense and defense, that's their strategy. It seems like they're still going to rock the same formation, which is a 4-4-2. We can't get enough of Noah's rationality. If you have good numbers and know how to do basic offense and defense, you win if your numbers are higher than the opposition. But is that really the case here though, since PXG is a very strong and competent team? You have Itoshi Rin, Shidu Ryusei, Charles Chevalier, and more, who are led by Julian Loki. Furthermore, PXG is undefeated as well, so basic offense and defense might not cut it here. Let me say this, Noel Noah continues, whoever comes in second will not be remembered. This statement can be proven when I ask you guys this question. Who is the second fastest man in the world? Exactly, you don't know. But everyone knows Usain Bolt, right? That's just how the world of sports operates. This is also something that Kunigami should have paid attention to before he decided that he wanted to become a hero. If you're not number one, they won't leave their mark on this world. Itoshi Sai is going to whip Isagi if he loses this one. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider subscribing. Noel Noah says that they will win this and make their marks in history. Isagi seems to be very excited right now. Noel Noah is going to head to bed right now as he's going to pass the spotlight to a special guest. And that man is no other than Igo Jinpachi, 
as Noah tells the dictator to go ahead only for Ego to tell him to shut up. Bro has no mercy with the way he speaks to the world's best striker. Ego tells him to get the hell out and go to bed as he calls him a bastard. Noel Noah agrees and tells him goodnight. Can someone tell me why he is so nice to Ego Jinpachi but very intimidating towards Michael Kaiser while Kaiser treats Noah very nicely and Ego treats Noah like a piece of dirt? Where is that Ego of his at right now? Why is he so tolerant of Ego's presence and language? Yukimiya looks to be a bit confused by Ego Jinpachi's arrival in physical form as he greets them with the iconic diamonds in the rough as he wants to personally say a few things before the final round starts. Ego Jinpachi is about to cook as the time is ticking for the final battle. Every time the man has to say something, it's always something very important, so this better be worth my time as well. The first thing he wanted to mention was the key he gave them to win. Igaguri was confused as Hiori recalled that it was the proof of originality. If we go back to chapter 153, we can see that that's what the road to becoming a professional was meant for. They must accurately visualize what they want to become and choose the best environment for themselves. For better or worse, this choice is guaranteed to completely derail their lives. And Hiori was right. Ego is stating that they're hitting the barrier of the real world. As the egoists continue to fight through the salary bidding system, he has a very important question to ask them. Just what does originality mean to them? Isagi is confused as Ego asks if it's their own personal playstyle. Or maybe it's how much money they're worth. No, those are just superficial answers. Superficial answers wouldn't get you anywhere in the world of sports unless your desires are less than becoming the world's best. The prime example is Itoshi Sei catching a case on Sendao Shuto. Originality equals hunger. You weren't born with it. It wasn't taught to you. He asks them what they hunger for. This is what makes a person's originality. For example, Baru Shue's originality is becoming the king of the football world and crushing everyone in his path. Rin's hunger is surpassing Atoshi Sai and destroying Asagi Yoichi. Shidu's hunger is proving his existence through scoring goals as he gets a dopamine rush from it every time. For Isagi, I'd imagine it's to become the world's best striker and lead Japan to victory in the World Cup. In order for them to win so far in the Neo-Egoist League, they had to rationally commit to a required role. They must follow their own ideals and voluntarily destroy and recreate themselves over and over again. They've been forced to ask what they want to be. Blue Lock is this kind of twisted place after all. You get confronted with your darkest desires or lack thereof, but this kind of self-reflection could help them a lot in the professional world. Those who cannot explain their ideal are second-rate strikers. This doesn't only go for how they want to play, but their belief systems as well. Do they want to be a regular like Gurumu Igaguri? Do they want to desperately survive like Raichi Jingo? Do they want to beat that guy's meat? Do they want to become number one like Isagi Yoichi? The hunger that has been revealed here is now their originality. This is precisely what Nagi has to do to ultimately succeed in the Neo-Egoist League as well. The world is waiting for that challenging focus of theirs, the radiance of a footballer. I wonder if this is foreshadowing that the final match will be held in the U-20 Stadium and be a full 90 minutes long. That would be sick, it would surpass the U-20 match, and we get to indulge in it some more before we head to the U-20 World Cup arc. The ones that keep fighting through this crazy, continuous frenzy. Ego Jinpachi calls them professionals. So his question to the egoists is if they are ready to shine. To be continued in Chapter 248, Final Fight. Watch this video next where I talk about the best rivalries in Blue Lock.